Hello, welcome to No Bones About It. Today's guest is Dr. Mark Blumberg, whose book, Freaks of Nature, What Anomalies Tell Us About Development and Evolution, is the subject of our conversation. Dr. Blumberg, welcome again to No Bones About It. Mm -hmm. Freaks of nature. We regard freak as a four-letter word here at the museum. Should we? Well, it was a tough decision in many ways to, to actually go with that name, freaks, and, and, and uh, freaks of nature. But what I really wanted to point out with the book was um, if I could retitle the, the script, I would say freaks of nature. And the point was not, you know, was really to say that we shouldn't be looking at freaks or monsters or any of the other, you know, there's other words that we've used historically uh, to talk about anomalies or people, creatures, animals that are different, um, but really to think about them as part of the natural fabric. fabric. Um, because no matter what kind of uh, individual that you look at that is different, that's grown differently, that behaves differently, uh, they're all part of the same developmental process that produces the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, the title can be a little bit jarring from that standpoint, but the, but the global message of the book is, is actually quite inclusive. On the global message, how is a two-headed person like a two-headed minnow? Well, oddly enough, they're, they're quite similar in the sense of sharing embryological or developmental processes that gave rise to both of them. So uh, there are a variety of, uh, of anomalies that are shared in, in human beings and in non-human animals. And uh, one thing that we can, um, we really learn a lot uh, by looking at those common developmental processes. Not only does it, again, make humans part of, of nature, part of all these other um, wonderful animals, but it also helps us to understand you know, where we come from evolutionarily, what we share with other animals, and also gives us a better appreciation for um, how adaptable um, all of these you know, varieties and diversities of organic life can be. You are involved in research in cognitive science. Mm -hmm. You're a professor of psychology at the University of Iowa. Yes. And I understand your current research area is in sleep. Mm -hmm. How does sleep work into the subject? Well, uh, when I give my uh, more academic talks, um, I, 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 the segue I make from the topic of the book to sleep is that, is that to get through, to get to a place where uh, you are, let's say, born without legs, the way, for example, Johnny Eck, who's kind of a hero of the book. Johnny Eck was born uh, without uh, developed legs. He had a condition known as Amelia. And um, if uh, you see the movie Freaks from 1932, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. that word again. Uh, Johnny Eck was extremely mobile. He walked on his hands. He was very athletic. He's a remarkable uh, person. He's a very good actor. And, um, and so Johnny Eck was able to do quite a bit with this differently constructed body. And, uh, and if we look at Johnny Ack or a variety of other uh, people or animals that are born with oddly shaped bodies, missing limbs, overgrown limbs, what have you, we also know that their brains are different. And, I, and I'm a behavioral neuroscientist, so I'm interested in how the brain helps to produce behavior. But I'm also a developmental behavioral neuroscientist, so I'm interested in how you move through development with the body that you have to do the things that you do. And as it turns out, sleep, may be a very important part of the process of moving us through development, of constructing our brains, of allowing our bodies to be functional with respect to our, our behavior. So it's all of a piece, um, really. You just cited the example of Johnny Eck. Um, if you would, give us another little case history, mm -hmm. uh, particularly to illustrate how people adapt, move on with what other people would regard as freakish anomalies. Uh, well, in the Victorian age, which is when you know the the freak shows and the side shows were really most um, prominent, um, there were individuals who were known as armless wonders, um, people born without arms, and they were able to use their feet uh, to do all kinds of things: um, eat food, pick up utensils, and eat food, sew, play musical instruments. Uh, they were able to do quite a bit. Um, uh, My Left Foot uh, is a movie about that very sort of. Uh, adaptability uh, that happens when you are born without uh, a functioning part. 
The thing is that the process that allows a, a human being to use their foot in this incredibly adaptive way, an armless wonder to do this sort of thing, is no different from the process by which we used to, we learn to use our hands to do the same thing. And that's, you know, really what the, the book is about, to point out how development allows us uh, to do all of these things. And it doesn't matter how your body really is formed, you will learn how to use the body that you have. If you had to give some advice informed by your research in your book to say our docents here who have to talk to people and explain why we have certain things in the museum that might make them wince, two-headed fetuses, mm -hmm. uh, other anomalies here. What advice would you give our docents? Um, appreciate it for what it is. It's a, it's a wonderful museum. I visited here several years before I wrote the book. I found it inspiring in many different ways. It's good to open our, our eyes up and see just how diverse the, the real world is. You know, people go to zoos to see the diversity of, of well-formed species, species that are considered okay, you know, the ones that, that we believe to be um, um, perfect, you know, many people do. But really, the variety and the diversity that you see, you know, in this room and on the other floors of this, of this uh, great museum, uh, this is part of the diversity that produces the diversity that you see at zoos. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between, say, an armless wonder um, uh, or Johnny Yak, who was, was, uh, had very short legs, and a snake? A snake is a limbless but functioning reptile. Um, and I would say there's virtually no difference. That how you get, how you have species that have this diversity comes out of the developmental oddities and, and anomalies, deformities, that, that you have in this museum. Dr. Blumberg, thank you very much for talking to us today about your book. And thank you for joining us on No Bones About It. For more information about our upcoming events and programs, go to our website, or you can follow us on Twitter. Thanks for joining us, and come back and see us again.